I'm just a Broadway baby. Walking off my tired. Hey, theatre bees. I was going to call you like theatre goers. E. And then I was going to call you theatre bees, but now I'm beginning to think the bees. Hey, the bees. How are you? All good? Yeah, well, after my last introductory video, which, as I'm sure you all remember, was quite rough, I've actually got a topic for today, which is the basics. So, a lot of people who don't work in theatre are befuddled when theatre people say stuff. So, for instance, if a director goes, Move down stage left, darling, there's a love. Mind the flats, this isn't damn promenade theatre. Remember your blocking and no, 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 what's your intention? You can understand why they'd get a bit confused because to a theatre person who's worked in theatre, acting, directing, producing, tech, teching, whatever, like that would make sense, kind of, even though I'm wearing the jacket and the skirt. So I like dressing up, it's fine. Um, but to a non-theatre person, that doesn't make any sense at all. And actually, I often talk to people and you say things like, oh, we were doing the blocking, and they go, the what? And actually, I think it's quite a good thing to be clear on what these things are, even if you're a theatre person, just so that you can actually go to someone and be like, actually, it's this, okay, this is what it is. Because a lot of people, I think, don't have that ability that once they know the word, they will just use it for themselves and not understand that people around them don't necessarily understand what the hell they're talking about. And it's always good to be understood. So, without further ado, me and my chalkboard, with mirror writing this time so you can read it, um, we're going to explain some of the more simple things. Number one is... Downstage left. Downstage left, or anything, to be honest, downstage right, upstage right, you know, centre stage. But essentially, you have to believe that you are the actor in this case. It is a term used for actors only so that they understand what's going on. Because if a director shouts out, can you stand on the left, please? The actor's face, whether it's the audience's left or the actor's left. And so to differentiate, they've created the term stage left, which means the actor's left, the actor's right. Downstage for the actor is as far down the stage towards the audience they can get. Upstage is as far away from it, so towards the back. Because often stages are also built on a tilt, Sorry, that was bad. A tilt. So you've got to imagine that they're actually literally coming down stage and going up stage. And it's built like that, obviously, so that the audience can actually see what's going on. But you don't notice it. There's a theatre, I'm in Bristol at the moment, and the Bristol Old Vic, when you stand on it, the slope is quite pronounced and you don't realise it. But that's how it is. And the Hippodrome too. So when they have dancers there, the dancers not only have to learn how to be athletic and graceful, but they also have to not fall over the slope. Anyway, that's downstage left. Flats. Flats are the scenery, in essentially large pieces of wood which are supported by weights and things which make up walls on set. So in old fashioned plays the entire room would be created of flats and they are often used to create a room or something. But then also in more modern pieces like Blood Brothers they have a single flat decorated come down on the stage so you still have this separation, this Brechtian realisation that you are watching a play, you're not involved in the events and believing them to be true, but there's still flats in a lot of theatres today and they are still used all the time. Promenade. Promenade is theatre with audiences on two sides, so essentially the stage becomes a catwalk. It's really good for theatre where you want people moving a lot because they can go up and down and draw the audience's attention. For instance, in Taming of the Shrew, if it was done in, uh, in a catwalk style, then you could have um, Katharina be dragged from one end of the stage to the other using the promenade stage and that would make it much more visceral and sort of present because you would be there and you would be watching someone drag the length of a stage but it does also limit because you can't hide anything from the audience you can have very little scenery and if your play doesn't involve tension or shouting like if you can't have one character there and one character there yelling at each other because that's not in a the script then it can be also quite daunting and dare I say it, potentially dull if the audience are forced to, you know, the Wimbledon style 
of spectating. In the round? In the round is... In the round it is an audience on all sides. So the Tobacco Factory in Bristol, which is a little theatre, is completely in the round. The actors have entrances on uh, four sides, which are basically tunnels. They come almost through the audience. And it means that you have no escape, but it can also mean, and especially with Shakespeare, when you have monologues or soliloquies or anything like that, you can deliver them to anyone. And also I've seen productions of Othello in the round, and Iago, the villain, has some wonderful soliloquies all about how he's going to basically bring everyone down. And he walks around the stage, and it means that you are drawn and he's almost conspiring with you because he talks to you as he walks around and there's also this circular motion so it feels almost like he's ensnaring you as an audience as well. It can be really powerful but you have to be careful because if done badly it means that people in certain situations won't be able to see what's going on because some actor might be standing directly in front of them. So the key thing with that is that all the actors need to be moving pretty much all the time. You can never be still because at any point, someone is being blocked from seeing what's in. It needs to be done well, but it can be good. Thrust. Thrust. Not rude, I promise. But it's a, similar to in the round, except that there is a f fourth wall, which is not audience-aided. So you have audience on three sides. It, the stage is literally thrust into you, as it were. <laughs> Sounds bad. But you know what I mean. So there's audience there. And it means, again, you have the in the round sort of ability to work with them but it also means you can have more scenery you can have concealed entrances and exits and things like that which you can't have so much with in a round the Sheffield Crucible is thrust stage definitely worth it but again you need to make sure that your actors are moving because there is always potential to be blocked proscenium arch proscenium arch is the main one it's the one that most people will know it's called so cool because it has the arch in front of the stage usually where the actors are separated from the audience by their fourth wall which is what actors use to term imagining that there is a fourth wall so they can't see the audience so that their acting doesn't become too stereotypically sort of 18th century where everything was played out to the audience and they were going to size where they would talk like that and then go cut back into the action and the fourth wall is designed to prevent that really the idea of it so that it's all naturalistic acting because that's what our culture at the moment enjoys you will find with that that there are advantages and disadvantages, like all the others, but this is the most common because it's all theatres have been built up like that up till recent times, to be honest. The Olivier Theatre at the National is semi proscenium March. It's got more sort of curved seating, so it's slightly thrust, you could argue, but also not entirely. But then the Littleton there is completely proscenium stereotypical. I mean, all the Alan Bennett plays are always put on there. And it's very traditional theatre and often associated with traditional plays. But then also the theatre, like the Royal Court Theatre, which is well known for only doing new writing, is also proscenium. So it's, it is interesting to note how we associate it with things that necessar aren't necessarily true. So there you go. That's proscenium. And that is the one you will probably know if you don't know the others. But also, as I say, it's kind of becoming seen as a bit outdated. Like, people don't necessarily want to perform in that space because they want in the round or they want, well, what's the next? Immersive. Immersive! Um, yeah. Immersive theatre is new-ish and it is essentially involving the audience in a play. That's what it is. So it will generally, the ones I've been to, they take you round a space, they incorporate you, they sometimes get you to wear hats or tell jobs and things like that and they'll ask you questions and they'll come up to you and speak directly to you and expect you to respond to them as a character. So the one I went to was done by students at Sheffield University and it was called Bear With Snow and it was very good, very well done, but like people would come up to you and be like, so how are you doing? And it is quite invasive in a way. It's interesting to notice how it's completely different and they will take you around, they tell you a story generally, you discover with the characters as it were, so it's not you watching something, it's you participating, it's you walking around. And the sort of more advanced ones let you walk around by yourself. So you can go to any room and walk through. Green room. The green room is 
backstage. It's where the actors sit when they're not on stage, and I don't know why it's called the green room. There must be a reason, but all the green rooms I've been in have generally been grey and quite dirty and covered with lots and lots of blue tack. Blocking. Blocking. Right. This is essentially the movement the actor makes around the stage. That's it. So the director in rehearsals will go, I need you to cross from here to here. I need you to cross from the door to the window so that you're at the window when Sir George enters with the pistol and you can turn in horror and run behind the armchair. The actor then scribbles that all these down in their script dutifully and then they try doing it. The actor generally forgets during some of it and has to be reminded, getting crossed by the director. And then eventually it all clicks and if it's done well it means that you understand exactly what's going on. If it's done badly it means that the play becomes confusing. Inten intention. For every line an actor has, they should have an intention. This is, again, a theoretical approach, so I think it's more Mamet than Stanislavski if you watched the last video, but it's widely accepted as a very good thing to do. And an intention is what you're, meet, what you're trying to do. So they often say, I something you, so I plead with you, I cajole you. And they often, some directors make their entire cast write out I something you for every single one of their lines. It, to sort of reinforce again for the clarity of the scene. So, for instance, if a, a man is bargaining with a woman to stop a dolphin from being drowned, this isn't a play, I'm making this up. So you might have the man going, I bargain with you. But then that can go more specific. That can be the overall um, scene's I something you. That can be the overall scene intention. But then you within that you have lots of little intentions. So you can have a line where the man says, if you don't do that to the dolphin, I will buy you a fish. And then you've got, I, um, how would you describe that? Exactly, it's, it's quite difficult. And you go, maybe I could jole you or I bribe you. But then you could also have something like, if you don't stop hurting that dolphin, I'm going to punch you in the face. And that is, I threaten you. And so by doing that, you can actually sort of, twiddle out loads and loads of interesting things within the scene, which make the scene mo much more watchable. So, that's kind of my general basic introduction to a lot of theatre stuff. Obviously I couldn't cover everything, but I think I've covered the basics as I think about them. You know, terms like stage left, stage right, blocking and flats and things like that, but then also slightly more advanced stuff like intentions and things like that. So, hopefully it was interesting for you, but until next time, bye bye.